So this is Toby. I'm Karam, and this is Elena. Okay, let's start. This video is essentially going to go over what we packed for our three-week trip. We're no case experts on the matter, as you're soon very going to find out. Very far from it. We packed too many things. Yeah, we packed way too many things. But yeah, essentially we're going to go over what we packed, but also sort of give you some feedback on what we found useful and what we found definitely not useful and recommend you do not bring. Like 10 kilos of camera equipment. And it's important to keep in mind that if you're trying to complete your trip as fast as possible, you're definitely going to be rolling your eyes at our packing list. For us, the whole point of this trip was to slow down and take a step back. So obviously a lot of the things that we packed were so that we could, you know, enjoy some minimal comfort. So I just think it's important to hang on to your why. Like why are you coming and doing this trip um, in order to really pack appropriately. All right. So first up we have food. Ellen over here is the queen of the food. She That was her project, her baby, so I will let her do her thing and I'm just gonna come here and play with the dog. So we're doing 20 day trip-ish, three weeks. We've divided the food into 10 days and 10 days. So we're doing a food drop, so we don't have to carry everything with the canoe, it's not gonna fit in the barrel. So essentially it's just like a halfway mark, more or less, where we're gonna put half of the food there and then halfway through the trip we're just gonna pick it up. Okay, so we're gonna go drop our food into the Algonquin after this place over here. They've generously offered to drive it up for us uh, to our Cedar Lake location, which is gonna kind of be our halfway point or like the point where we're gonna turn around and come back here. So this is a brand that we find, found, it's Canadian brand, Harvest Food Works. Um, they do freeze-dried meals. So given the length of our trip, freeze-dried food was really an essential item, really practical and actually allowed us to get a lot more creative with meals than if we had just brought, you know, rice and pasta. It's kind of cool, you've got the amount of calories for the amount of people and the amount of like grams and then on the back you have like the exact nutrition. They're all veggie meals. You can add meat to them but it comes as a side. So this is gonna be like our savior. This is literally what we're eating every day, most meals. Small disclaimer, the food did make us rather gassy. You have to be very comfortable with your partner if you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like chili and penne and stir fries. Um, they also have desserts, Ooh. which I got excited about because it's going to be my birthday whilst we're on the trip. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got brownies. I made a brownie and it was just for me. <laughs> we did not end up using any of the fancy desserts or breakfasts. The biggest reason for that was just that we didn't bring a pan. We only had one pot because we were trying to pack light. So we couldn't make like the pancakes or scrambled eggs really properly. Mm. <laughs> Oh, this is what I'm talking about. This is better than sex. I probably wouldn't take those again. I think they were just extra weight for us. Also, in the mornings, we were just in a hurry usually, and we would just make oatmeal with peanut butter, bananas. There were sun-dry goods like crackers, peanut butter to put on crackers. Mm, it's really sticky. <laughs> it's very dry. Pasta, maybe some rice, things that we can just have with broth. And then fresh food, which we'll have for the first week, probably, of our trip. Fruit, apples, oranges, veggies. Good job on that one. You don't want to hear about the cliff bar situation? <laughs> Tell me about the cliff bar, please. We've got lots of cliff bars. <laughs> about two cliff bars every day I for the that. entire trip. Yes. <laughs> So to summarize the food situation, what would we change? Even though it's really heavy, I would have maybe um, brought a little bit more fresh food for the beginning because some things really do last. You know, like oranges, or even bring lemon or things for seasoning. We had a lemon that lasted like 12 days. Yo, we got a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely more peanut butter. I would have brought more peanut butter for sure. And maybe just make my food a little bit more exciting. Um, you know, we brought oatmeal or maybe mixed some dried raisins in there, um, some almonds or nuts, or just try to make the, the, the food that gets really repetitive, like breakfast food, a little bit more uh, diverse also nutritionally. But apart from that, I think honestly, food was a thing that I wouldn't have changed that much. I think we did that pretty well. I thought we did the camera gear really well. I think it's because it was my part that I organized that it went really well. No, it's because I ate everything. So we get a lot of questions about the water and how we drank and filtered our water. There we go. Filter in. And that's my water for the day. These are the best things ever. 
Um, they're a brand called Mizu, Mizu, Mizu Life, I think, is the full name of the brand. They're immediate water filtration water bottles. So if you open it up, you have this. This is a water filter. It can filter up to 40 gallons of water, so a pretty decent amount of time. And you can just buy them again. Anyway, what it does is that you can literally just like fill your water bottle up in like a stream, a tap, whatever, and it will like filter it out immediately so you can drink water you don't have to wait an hour for the you know tablet i'll say this is probably our best purchase we were very happy with it and we 100 percent recommend it what that was good it wasn't any good <laughs> <laughs> like, i must stick to script <laughs> so now we're just going to get into the main part of it which is uh, our camping gear and clothing we basically have two really big dry bags they are 70 liters each this they're very cool. colorful and this is minnow no, this is yeah, like Petunia. But then we're also going to have two smaller ones, things that need to be easily accessible, like if we want sort of uh, phones or, you know, like a camera, snacks, things like that. Um, maybe like a headlamp, depending. Things that are easily accessible but still in the dry bag. And then we will have a barrel, about 30 liters, for our food. So we're going to start with the non camera equipment bag, so the everything else bag. Paul. Start with my swimsuit because let's face it, if I go swimming, it'll be naked. I have merino wool base layer, so like tight on my skin, that's like really nice and dries really nicely. And then I have a down jacket that I will be wearing when it gets cold. Uh, it's very light and very nice. And then on top of this, if it gets even colder and if it's raining, then you put on your raincoat. Bring completely waterproof gear because honestly when you're out on the canoe and it's raining and it's windy, you're basically sitting in a puddle of water. I brought with me a waterproof marmot jacket and waterproof pants and Elena over here bought a PVC. Yeah, mine was fully PVC. Nothing <laughs> got through that. No air, no water. It's the sweatiest. <laughs> it's the sweatiest thing I've ever worn, quite honestly, but I also really don't regret it because it kept me absolutely dry and I had so few clothes anyway that it was really nice to actually just never get wet. Well, not quite. Never. I have these really cool pants I also got from Vietnam. <laughs> They're like these like zipping like shorts slash pants. Really cool. <laughs> I don't really have any like sport techie gear just because it's ugly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what you need here. I just have two long sleeve shirts. They're just like pretty basic. Um, they dry pretty fast. I didn't bring any t shirts because I think it's going to be too cold for that. And if it's not, then I'll just like wear a sports bra. I got my sports shorts because I'm sporty. Um, oh, this is my favorite, so <laughs> I have this really snug sweater. It's cropped. That's pretty much the only reason why I'm taking it. It's nice. It's warm. Wait, you've decided you're taking it? Yeah, I'm taking it. It's cropped. It's literally like it's warm, but it goes up to here. But it's soft. Yes, it's soft, but you need something practical. We, we are going to be carrying everything, so we haven't decided if she's taking it yet or not. We just, have. Just to, it's coming. just to put it out there. I actually do not regret this. I, I regret wore, it. I wore it exactly once and looked fabulous. I regret it. I should have stopped. And that's going to be like you showing like the video and the picture of me looking really good. When did you wear it? I don't even remember. There's, there are footage. Okay. Then soft shell pants. <laughs> this is the one like actually like nice outdoorsy thing I have. I just bought it. Patagonia down jacket. Like this is gonna be my pretty much everyday coat. It's gonna be quite cold, like down to maybe like zero degrees. Socks, socks, socks. And my swimsuit and a hat, because it's gonna be cold. So this is a great proof that we are not experts. I wore running shoes and I had sandals for rainy days. Because your feet dry faster than your shoes. I just have my blunt stones. Okay, so. <laughs> yes. Okay, so <laughs> enough of that. So we're gonna go for our camp gear now. Okay. So, Thermarest. Basically, they keep us warmer and they're very comfortable if we're gonna be sleeping 21 days in the wilderness. So we have two, one each. Kalam actually bought a new sleeping bag for the trip and it was the snugliest. <laughs> 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 
Kobe. This is what happens when you eat your stick too fast. Anyways, we have two sleeping bags, mine and hers. They are both uh, comfort level zero. Um, we do expect it to get around one or two degrees some nights. Um, so if it does get really cold, we will be layering up in our sleeping bags. It was nice because we were able to uh, zip our sleeping bags together so we can snuggle together. Because oh. <laughs> we're snuggly sleepers. No, this, is, this is actually not going in the video. Like, I don't want any of this to be in the video. Okay, if you're gonna say the pillow line, you're gonna say it word for it. Because it's so good. It really good. <laughs> Come on, I spent time writing this. It's not Fine. Like it's if I can get creative. <laughs> Excuse me. Some might consider the pillows extra, but honestly, I'm glad I didn't spend three weeks sleeping with twigs and rocks jamming into my face at night. Deluxe mech pillows. They're very light. This is a three week trip, so comfort is important. Because like, if we're not comfortable and not sleeping properly, then we are more likely to quit. We have our tent. So this is an REI co-op. Passage 2. This isn't an ultra light tent. We just didn't want to spend $500 on it. We borrowed it from a friend We're like trying to be as budget friendly as possible. All right We also got a tent footprint. So this is basically to prevent any Moisture coming up from the soil up to the tent and to protect the layer of the tent and keep us dry My hammock <sighs> It's two person. It's ultra light. It's made out of parachute material so it dries really fast. It's good in pretty much any condition. It doesn't matter if it gets muddy, anything dirty, you can just chuck it in the wash. It is the best thing I've ever bought. Of course, straps for the trees. Also, if you say this is unnecessary and you think that you're not a hammock person, you, my friend, are wrong. <laughs> Everybody is a hammock person deep, deep down. They just don't know it yet. By the way, we just didn't want to spend $100 on a nice light piece of tarp um, when we can use this <laughs> and this is six dollars <coughs> microfiber tower is very very good for traveling lube I never travel without carabiners these are so useful you literally attach these to the outside of any bag and they're just not that heavy and they like support basically any weight that you need okay so we have two headlamps we have this wild Life. <laughs> no, it gives me anxiety. Really. Like, get them, don't do it, don't do it. Horn. Get them, vraiment. No, no, like, please. Oh, she pulls out the French. Uh, vraiment. <laughs> <laughs> get them. Matches in a, in a Ziploc bag just in case the um, lighters fail on us. Deodorant that we're gonna share. Cards, entertainment. First aid kit, and we bought um, ibuprofen in there just in case. And antihistamine. Face towels, either for uh, dishes or for faces. <laughs> <laughs> Two knives, where's yours? Mine's at home. Uh, tweezers in case you get splinters or... <laughs> for uni brows. For uni brows. You know, I still gotta look for the, good for the camera. Okay, and then toothbrush, um, biodegradable toothpaste. Got a propane. We just, for now, we've got like the, the 23 ounce. We've got three of those. Uh, we're gonna be doing most of our cooking on this. So we're gonna put one with a food drop and then two of those are gonna come with us. It's a little camp stove. This is the fancy spork. Um, as you can see, it clicks out. I've got a sponge for our dishes. We'll also be using camp suds. It's like the classic, it's what everybody uses, biodegradable dish soap. I've got my little spork, less sophisticated, but just as cute pot, pan, bowl. This can be used as a plate. This is my bowl. Pretty simple, folds down into nothing. It's a funky green. We love it. So all of this, this is basically cooking and plate and everything. Like when you think about it, that's pretty small. It's pretty compact. We have two mugs, his and hers. His, ugly, mine, cute. Coffee, we love coffee. Uh, we've just got a little like Italian coffee press. Spatula, just because, you know, for making pancakes, things like that, for cooking, it's just more useful than using a spork. Multi-purpose soap, so that's just gonna go to washing our clothes, washing our hair, washing our faces, our bodies, everything. Biodegradable. Less eco-friendly, um, DEET. <laughs> We're probably not gonna have bugs because it's gonna be cold, but I hate bugs and I hate mosquitoes, so I'm gonna bring it anyway. Then, water purification tabs. 
And then paracord. These are like really good because it's very strong and it literally weighs nothing. It could be very useful when you're, for example, setting up a tarp or drying you're drying clothes or just need extra rope. So we also bought a hatchet and a fire starter, which were really useful honestly on rainy days. Some consider it cheating, but we consider it Genius. resourceful. I'm giving you a five. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, camera gear. Okay, I'm gonna leave for this, quite honestly, because I'm uninterested and I'd rather go snack. So the lesson with the camera equipment is that I brought too much. What I shoot on is a Sony 7R2, and the lens that I used mostly was the 1635 f2.8G Master Lens. Great lens, highly recommend. Bought it for the trip and absolutely insane. I also used another lens, uh, which was a 70 to 200 f4 and the 50 millimeter 1.8 for low light. Basically, these are the lenses that I use for this film. Honestly, I would say I even used this maybe for a shot or two. Um, and the 70 to 200 and the 1635 for the rest of the stuff. And I bought an intervalometer for time lapses. Also, I had a GoPro, which surprisingly I did not even use once. I probably should have looking back at it, but it just never really came across to me. And I had a protective plastic cover for the camera. I also have a Gorilla Pod that my camera was on the whole time, uh, you know, setting it on the shore, getting those like nice tripod shots as we can do past the camera. And I mainly used a Rode shotgun mic on camera. Everything was in this low pro bag. I recommend, but it's very heavy. So just keep that in mind. Thinking back on it, I probably should have bought SD cards, but instead I used a uh, MacBook Air and brought my two hard drives with me and just emptied the memory cards that I had into the hard drives, adding a lot of weight. Yeah, bad idea. So how did I power everything that I have? Um, honestly, this is probably the most important and probably most interesting part for me is that I use this Goal Zero Nomad 28 Plus solar panels. These were a lifesaver. This trip couldn't have happened without this, basically. Um, so this collects the energy of the sun. Obviously, it's a solar panel. Um, and it takes the power and charges this Goal Zero Sherpa uh, 100 AC. And why I chose this one is because it actually takes AC input so I can actually charge my computer. With this I also powered my camera batteries and our phones for navigation and you know photos and all that kind of stuff. Great products honestly without these I couldn't have filmed everything that I did for this trip. No, I did not change my hair overnight. This was shot six months ago in our old apartment. This one is better. Yeah, it's a lot better. We have stairs. We ballin'. <laughs> not really, we have no money. <laughs> Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, speaking of money, let's get to the budget. <laughs> the total we came up with for a three week canoe trip was $4,865.35. Canadian dollars. This included the rental of all paddling gear, the purchase of all camping gear, and our park permits. We'll link the budget in the space below, right next to the like button. Because we're poor. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> kitty cat, kitty cat, kitty cat class, the way she climbs up and down them paws, looking like one of them pretty cat dolls. Okay, so once we had this number, we wanted to cut it down in any way that we can. The gear section alone was $2,410. So we reached out to friends and borrowed sleeping bags and tents, which saved us $700. The biggest budget cut that we had was our partnership with the Algonquin Outfitters. Shout out Randy, you're awesome. Um, base... <laughs> <laughs> you got something with Randy I need to know about? <laughs> We, ha we did an exchange of services where we provided them content and uh, they gave us the gear for free. So that saved us $1,078. We love that. Love it. We love a good save. Thank you, Randy. Our food came out to $300, including dehydrated meals, dry goods, and fresh food. The park permit for 21 days came out to 497 Canadian dollars. 
I don't think we need to stick any of those every time. I feel like we should really hammer that. <laughs> 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 okay, let's get this done so I can get back to work. Okay. My real job. Because <laughs> YouTube doesn't pay. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we already owned. <laughs> okay, so we already owned old camera equipment. So what we needed was to get solar panels and a battery pack that we got from Goal Zero, and that costed us about seven hundred and thirty Canadian dollars, an expense which you can probably take off because you're not going to be filming. After hammering away at expenses left, right, and center, we ended up with a budget of two thousand one hundred and seventy dollars between the two of us. Mm -hmm. So that's 1085 per person. For a three-week canoe trip with no or very little prior equipment or clothing. Camping clothing. <laughs> we have clothing. Yes, you brought a fucking crop top. <laughs> they really heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> Many more seasoned campers or canoers are probably going to have a better packing strategy as well as a more organized packing list. However, if you're a first-time camper, or like us, you don't necessarily have a big budget, this is a great video and a great list for you to be able to find things around the house or borrow equipment from your friends. Here's to hoping you have a great trip and you... <laughs> Stay safe out there, kiddos. <laughs> like and subscribe. Hit the smash button. <laughs> <laughs> like the smash button. <laughs> okay. Um, if you haven't checked our series, you should probably check it out because I, uh, we think it's pretty cool. And we also have a little short film about the whole trip if you want to check that out as well. You know, it's really awkward when you're not speaking. Yes. Yeah. You're like, what do I, what do, I do? When also I, I end up look? looking places and then I realize I probably shouldn't be because then they're going to be looking at me looking at something, you know? Okay, can we, use, can we stop the recording? I have, I'm burning 4K. Okay. Is this done? Oh, yeah, just stop it. Yeah? Yeah.